Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today we're going to take a look at how to disassemble the Sprite extruder, that direct drive extruder that is found on a lot of newer Creality Ender uh, 3D printers. This particular one is on my new Ender 3 V3 SE. Um, real quick, before we get started, if you all could click that like and subscribe button, and when the video is over, please consider leaving a comment. That really helps uh, small channels like mine with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it doesn't promote us like it used to, and those uh, three simple things really do a lot uh, to boost my videos and get them seen by more people and it helps me out a lot. So if you like what I do here, if it helps you out, please consider helping me out and uh, just clicking that like and subscribe and leaving a comment. Thank you. One more thing before we get started. I curate a list of Amazon links for 3D printers, filaments, uh, spare parts, nozzles, uh, tools to work on your 3D printer, things like that over on my website. I'm going to have it linked in the video description. I'm linking it up above right now. Uh, but I get a lot of people ask me what are the specific brands that I recommend or the specific tools I use to work on my printer. These are the things I actually use in my office on my printer. So um, everything in here I've tried these are the things I use on a regular basis and recommend. So if you uh, have a need for anything like that, as I said, it's linked up above right now. It's linked in the video description, and I will continue to uh, update and maintain this list for you all. So that's a resource for you. Uh, it makes it real simple if you're looking for something for your printer. Go to this list. This is, these are things I actually use and have tested and I know work well. So, okay, let's get started here. Um, I got this printer about two weeks ago. I noticed yeah, it's been printing good, um, but I noticed it's not gripping the filament super, super tight. There's barely any marks on it when I retract it out. Um, and I also noticed it doing an odd clicking noise when it would perform retraction sometimes. So I thought, well, maybe you know, I just need to tune the extruder a little bit. There's a screw on the right-hand side of it that if you turn it clockwise, it will increase tension on the spring. If you turn it counterclockwise, it will decrease tension. Increasing tension on that spring will uh, increase the amount those gears bite into the filament and improve the grip. So I tried turning that screw a couple times and nothing changed. It did not alter how much tension was uh, gripping that filament. And I thought, well, that's really weird. Um, when you turn that screw to the right, you're increasing spring tension. So as you turn it to the right, you should uh, get more resistance to turning it. As that spring compresses, it's pushing against that screw and it should get harder and harder to turn. And this wasn't, it was just spinning on its own and the tension didn't change at all. So I thought, okay, something's wrong here. You need to take it apart. So that's what I'm gonna show you here is how to get the Sprite extruder off of your machine, how to open it up and take a look inside in case you've got, um, I don't know, shape. If, uh, what happened to me here is the screw and the nut came apart. They detached from each other. Uh, you could also have uh, filament shavings in here that need to be cleaned out once in a while or something like that. So let's get started here. Um, the first thing you're going to do is on the, your right hand side of the uh, fan shroud, there are two screws that you're going to remove. And then you're also going to remove a single screw on the left hand side. Once that is done, you can move that fan shroud out of the way. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the or detach the wires for the extruder motor and the CR touch. Um, when doing this, you can reach in there. If it's your first time detaching these, there's going to be hot glue on them from the factory. You can just pick that off with a pair of tweezers. It's not going to hurt anything. Just don't yank the wires out of the connectors. Once you get the hot glue off and then just pull those plugs out of the sockets, either with your fingernails or uh, with a pair of tweezers. Just be careful not to yank on the wires themselves. You can pull them out of the plug. So get those two wires off. Now, on the right-hand side of the extruder, there are four mounting screws. You're going to want to take those four screws off, and you don't have to worry 
about the extruder falling off, uh, it's going to stay in place because it's sitting on top of a boat of a short length of PTFE tubing like you have in a Bowden tube on the uh, uh, earlier versions of the Ender 3. So get those screws removed. The next thing you're going to do is lift that extruder assembly straight up and off that PTFE tube that you see there. Okay, next, once you lift that off, on the back side, there are two screws holding this assembly together. There's a front half and a back half. You're going to run and remove these two screws, and they're pretty long. And when you open this up, this is what you're going to see. Now, mine looks different than yours. This is not how it should look. Um, this here is how it should look. This photo right here is how your extruder should look when you open it up. This photo here is how mine looked. And the difference is that screw and that nut have detached. And this is why my screw was at an angle, uh, which I thought was odd, but I'd never opened one up, so I didn't know it wasn't supposed to be. And this is why I didn't get any increased or decreased resistance on the screw, no matter you know how I turned it. If I turned it to the right, it should have increased. If I turned it to the left, it should have decreased. What should happen here is... If this is assembled properly, uh, as you turn that screw to the left, that nut will go towards the screw head and decrease uh, pressure on that spring. If you turn it to the right, it's going to do just the opposite. It's going to force the nut down the shaft and compress that spring, increasing tension on your filament. Um, mine was doing neither, and the reason is the nut isn't on the screw. So to fix this, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the screw and the nut out. And you're probably going to have to just pull the screw out first and then the nut will come out too because the screw is actually inserted into the spring a little bit. Uh, but get those removed. Needle nose pliers uh, will help here. And then you're going to screw them together about like this or maybe put that nut a little bit further. Now remember, your instinct is going to be to turn that screw to the right to put it into the nut. That's how screws and nuts normally work. With this one, you're going to want to uh, turn the screw counterclockwise to the left to get it to insert into the nut. So it's going to work just the opposite of every other screw and nut you've ever used in your life. So don't sit there and keep spinning it to the right and wonder why it's not going into the nut. That's why. Do the opposite. So once you have it about like that, you're going to want to put it into the assembly here with the protruding end of the threaded screw going into the center of the spring like you see here. Okay, And there is a little recess there for that uh, collar on the screw to sit in and that keeps it from shifting out of uh, the extruder assembly. But you want to start off about here. This is very loose tension. If you see that nut, it's backed up to that little extension there um, on the lower edge of that slope. Uh, that keeps the nut from backing up too far. But start there and then turn that screw clockwise and get that nut uh, where you're seeing here in this photo. This is about medium tension and this should be really good for you. Uh, this should work pretty much for everybody uh, with a fairly new spring. So if you want to see something to align it on, you see these three vertical posts here underneath that sloped area. I've kind of aligned that nut with the middle of those three posts, those support posts there. So that's kind of a good um, ID mark uh, for putting this together before you close it back up. So you're probably pretty close to where it's going to be for tension. Uh, you might have to adjust it a half turn or something when you're done. but. Uh, this, this should get you either dead on or really close to dead on. So here's just another view of everything in place. And you can see that collar underneath that slot there that holds the screw from backing out. Um, okay, once you have all that done, put your two screw the back cover on the extruder assembly and put the two screws back in and reassemble it. Next up, just a reminder... Uh, the multicolored wires for the extruder motor go into the top socket and the CR touch goes into the lower socket. Now these sockets are not the same size. Uh, one is a four pin, one is a five, the lower CR touch is a five pin. But still, if you got bad eyesight like me, uh, it'd be real easy to try to 
shove one into the wrong socket or something. So just be aware. Uh, the four color wiring goes to the top socket and that's an easy way to remember it. Uh, make sure your Bowden tube is still inserted into the hot end assembly like you're seeing here. Okay. Um, once, just make sure, and you can, and it's a good idea why you've got this apart. Just inspect it. Make sure there's no dried filament on it that you can pick off with some tweezers. Then you're going to place the completed extruder assembly right on top of that Bowden tube and slide it down. Mm -hmm. Get that to seat in place as far down as you can push it. Once that is done, you're going to go ahead and hook your two wires up and then replace your four mounting screws on the right hand side of the extruder. Okay, now once that is done, the motor and CR touch wires they have a tendency to want to come out over that mounting bracket where you have to screw in the left hand screw for the fan shroud. If they do, it's going to spread your fan shroud out and possibly crack it. It's also going to crush those wires. So make sure you push those to the inside of that mounting bracket so they're not between the bracket and the fan shroud. Get that fan shroud in place and do the single left screw first because those wires are important that they don't shift and get sandwiched in between that bracket and the fan shroud. So go ahead and get that screw done first. Then finish off by putting the two screws on the right hand side. Now, once you've done this, it's a really good idea since you've been monkeying around with the hot end assembly to re-level your printer. And this one, this is the V3SE. Uh, do the auto leveling uh, sequence. It'll go through and auto level and it will reset the uh, Z offset automatically. So if you found in the past on your V3SC that you liked fine tuning your uh, Z offset, make sure you do that again. And that's it. That's all you got to do to disassemble and clean out and make sure your uh, Sprite extruder is running and operating the way it should. Um, I hope this video helped you all, and if you would, please click that like and subscribe button.